I've been told so plenty of times. I said, well, you are hard to go out and do a job like that. I said, that's nothing to do with being hard. I mean, I'm kind. I've always been kind to everybody. And to try to do anything I can to help any, anyone I have. Well, honestly, in some cases, now, when I've done, there's like a smile come on their face. I think really that depends on what life they've lived. A person that haven't helped or, or done something what they really didn't ought to have done, often their faces are really sad looking after you've done them. But a person that has been a really a good living person who've helped others and been kind and all that like, there's often the smile come on their faces. The National Health Service dealt a death blow to Mrs. Mann's profession, with more people dying in hospital. For those who do need her services, the prospect's poor. My mother did it till she was 73, with my help. And since then, I've always done it alone myself. And I'm 68 and a half. So I don't, I don't know of anybody that would do it for me. Not really. I would willingly show any young person that there isn't none to do it. I wouldn't do it for, not for anything. People will just have to lay their own relatives out, I suppose. Clarissa Mann laid out her own mother and many others in this cemetery where small clusters of family graves, linking back through several generations, record the passing of the Paternosters, the Peppers, the Kindreds. A little apart, the rather more ornate resting place of the Lay family, doctors in Peasen Hall for 60 years. Although the last Dr. Lay retired between the wars, he still talked about in the village. His gardener and handyman was Kate Mills' husband. Could you tell a gentleman um, what kind of work Dad done, the hours he worked, what he was he, doing? He worked from 6 o'clock in the morning till sometimes 8 o'clock at night. My husband. You mean him, don't you? Yes, Yes, well, he used to get up at 6 o'clock in the morning, go around to Dr. Light. That was when he had the horse. And feed the horse and see after it, ready for it to go out with the doctor, you see. And perhaps I'd give him his breakfast there, and I never used to see him anymore at eight o'clock at night. All oh. times the night. Oh, there used to be somebody come here and crack a horse whip across the window to wake him up, I've heard him say. <laughs> he go out when it's high or rain, blowing snow. Two or three times of a night sometimes. Yes, two or three times of a night sometimes. Three times. What sort of man was Dr. Lay? Oh, a mm, real old-fashioned doctor. Yes, he was definitely a an old-fashioned doctor. A very meek and mild gentleman that he was. No, I'll tell you of a case I heard my father talk about. A man sitting in a chair, he got something wrong with one of his fingers, that he'd got to have off. Well, if it was at the present day, he'd go up to Ipsy's hospital. It wasn't the case then. Oh. The old doctor had my father hold that man in the chair, and there he was, and the father described it, gnawing away at his finger to cut it off. And when he'd finished, he'd turn round, well, I don't know, Mills, he said, but I think you better go outside, ain't you? <laughs> He, uh, Dr. Lay, uh, went visiting a man up Brugia Road. What did that man do now? He cut himself bad, I think. And the man said to Dr. Lay, he said, well, you know, that worry me to think I shan't be able to pay your bill. Dr. Lay said, well, don't worry about that. That don't matter as long as I can get you better. That was the sort of man our doctor was. But it was the old-fashioned doctor who was the first in the village to come to terms with the 20th century. Did 
In many country areas in the 1900s, it was the doctor who first recognized the value of the horseless carriage. And in Peasenhall, Kate Mills was one of the first to ride in the strange, noisy machine maintained by her husband.